we're on the lookout for the lost willows, the forgotten willows, the overlooked willows of the once great South Yorkshire Fenland. And here in the great floodplain of the lower River Don, around Fish Lake and Syke House, there's a wonderful legacy of these remarkable trees. The landscape is dotted with collections of ancient pollarded willows and also coppice willows. These magnificent trees often completely ignored and forgotten within the landscape. And yet these trees are a living connection to our history, heritage and culture. And in terms of landscape, they contribute to the area's distinctive character. And along with all these things, they form fantastic wildlife habitat too. So the search is on to find the trees, to record them, to celebrate them and conserve them. The two processes I mentioned, pollarding and coppicing, are anciently established ways of managing trees. These are techniques used to harvest wood for a variety of purposes, from cricket bats to coracles, to milkmaid's yokes, to baskets, to wattle and daub for buildings, to the rungs of ladders. They were also gathered for fuel wood, for fencing materials, for other constructional work and things like that. And prehistorically, bundles of these smaller regrowth, what we call withies, cut from the pollards or the coppices, would have been bundled up into faggots of small bore wood laid down to form causeways across the once great wetland landscape. So these are trees absolutely at the heart of the landscape character of this remarkable area. Willows are known for their fast growth habit but are perhaps less well known as ancient trees. An ancient tree is one that is in the third or final stage of its life and this stage can go on for decades or even centuries. We can tell the trees in the area are ancient by observing their wide hollowed trunks and features such as burrs and cavities. It is thought that the area may hold one of the largest collections of ancient pollarded willows across lowland England. With the kind permission of a number of landowners, we have selected and surveyed 10 ancient trees from across the two parishes. We have developed and used an adapted version of the Veteran Tree Initiative's specialist survey method. This form contains all the information needed to submit a record to the Woodland Trust's Ancient Tree Inventory, should this be something you wish to do. The first piece of information to collect is the tree's location, and this is recorded in the form of a six-figure grid reference. And if you don't have an OS map or GPS device available, you can actually download a free app on your smartphone which will give you a precise grid reference. Then we record the tree species. This was easy as the predominant species in the area, as it is nationally, is white willow. White willow is a large, fast-growing tree, growing up to 30 metres, unless pollarded, with a girth of around 3.5 metres as a mature tree. It has graceful, ascending limbs, and its leaves are lanceolate and have a characteristic silvery appearance with white, downy undersides. Young tree trunks and branches have a smooth, grey appearance, but as they age, they develop a regular pattern of deep furrows and ribs within the bark. Trees are either male or female and both genders produce fluffy long catkins which appear in spring. The tree's girth, measured at 1.5 metres high, is critical data when surveying an ancient tree. In order to measure the tree's girth you'll need to be equipped with a flexible and long tape and you'll need to do this in a pair. The Woodland Trust's Ancient Tree Inventory website provide some information on how to measure the girth of a tree in various scenarios. Then, the next piece of information to collect is the tree's form. So this is where we describe whether it's a coppice, a managed pollard, a lapsed pollard, a tiered lapsed pollard, or my favourite, phoenix regeneration. 
A pollard is where the tree has been cut above the natural browsing height of livestock, typically around three metres high, and is commonly found in areas of wood pasture or along boundaries where livestock routinely graze. When the practice of pollarding is discontinued, the tree is defined as lapsed, and as its upright stems continue to grow, they may lose vigour and become vulnerable to collapse. Coppicing, on the other hand, involves cutting a tree at or close to the ground level and is more typically found in managed woodlands where the new shoots are protected from grazing damage. The so-called phoenix trees are trees which have self-coppiced, following damage near the ground level or have regrown from broken branches which touch the ground. We then recorded features of the ancient tree. These include hollowing, burrs, cavities, insect boreholes, dead wood, fractured bark, epicormic growth, epiphytes and fungi. We tried to provide quantitative descriptions wherever possible. For example, when describing hollowing, we tried to, as accurately as possible, record the percentage of the tree's trunk that had hollowed. While recording all of this information has been important, we found the phrase, a picture paints a thousand words, couldn't be more relevant to when surveying ancient trees. Ancient trees, by their very definition, are varied and don't lend themselves to simple descriptions. Harwood Brearley, a travel writer who visited Fish Lake in 1899, was clearly a natural wordsmith and described them so eloquently as old, squab, knotted, carbuncular, land-sprouting things, flourishing alike in the lush meadows in front of every farmstead and in the steep bank of every drain. It is easy for fancy to trace grotesque forms and faces in their knobbed and knotted barks. So, with this in mind, we took lots of photographs too. So what we've seen is that there are some fantastic trees locally. This is probably a resource which also extends into other areas of North Lincolnshire and then, of course, south into the great fenlands of South Lincolnshire, East Anglia, Cambridgeshire, etc. That's maybe for another time. What we do know is that there's a lot more to learn and to do. These trees are hugely important, but they are, to a large extent, overlooked. There's a great biodiversity, there's cultural and landscape connections, and these are distinctive and characteristic of this particular area in and around Fish Lake and Psych House. We need to identify the trees, we need to be able to recognise their importance, we need to be able to conserve them for the future. It's very, very important that this element of our lost landscape is identified, is protected, is conserved and also that we make those connections to local people so that they understand their own heritage and the role, the unique and distinctive role that these great trees have played in that history.